Hallelujah. Glory be to the living God. <laughs> I want to share this with y'all. You know, the Lord just been showing me this. And it's things that I've seen uh, along the way of my walk. I've seen people fall off because of this. I've seen people turn away from God because of this. And it's been times where I myself have almost allowed this to overtake my heart. And I believe God really want me to share this with y'all because it's so important and it's still happening. And it's a tactic that Satan uses against a lot of Christians. Now, some of y'all heard me say before about a brother that I preached with for two years in the street straight. And he's a professor and atheist now. But some of y'all got a lot of new subscribers and some of y'all haven't uh, heard it. Man, I need a haircut. That's what that quarantine and stuff will do to you. But anyway, and I want to share this with y'all because I still see it happening to this day. I see how Satan is using this to destroy a lot of Christians and to harden our hearts. And to cause division, you know. Um, I've seen it happen many a times. Like I said, I ain't been born again all my life. I've only been born again six years since 2014. But along this uh, small amount of time, God has given me many, many experiences. Um, and he's shown me many things. And and I believe it's because we're coming to the last days. He's been doing this quick work in me and matured me, you know. Um, but this is about... The offended heart. You know, the spirit of offense or being offended. And uh, like I told y'all before in the video, I preached two years with a brother in the streets. I seen God use him. I seen God, I gotta have this music playing a little bit. It just, ha. Huh. Glory! Right. I seen God use him. I seen God use him to cast demons out of people. I seen God use him to lay hands on people. To heal the sick. I seen God use some prophets out of people. When we was just out in public at a store or something. We preached at many uh, gay pride parades. We preached at many 4th of July parades. God used us to, to draw a lot of people to him. Hundreds of people. And at this same brother over time allowed the persecution. Allowed the offenses to take root in his heart. And it eventually caused him to be offended in his heart. And it eventually caused him to fall away from the Lord because of it, you know. And it's something that I want to point out to y'all that i seen Satan do firsthand, you know. And he's still doing it to this day. It's, he's using offense to, uh, he's using things of the world for his persecution and you know, things of that nature, you know, rejection. He's using these things to wound our hearts. And when he wound, when he's able to wound your heart, he's able to allow the spirit of offense to take root in you. And what this spirit of offense is, is any little thing will offend you. You will be easily offended. And it will eventually cause you to push people away or it will eventually cause you to betray your brothers and sisters in Christ. Or it will have you react in an evil way, in a mean way where you are uh, becoming a railer out there in the streets when you preach or you become a debater or where you always arguing with people. You, you just be a part of so many contentions and strife because of this offended heart because of offenses now let's look at the word let's look at what jesus said when he was telling his disciples you know what the things that's going to take place before his coming and in verse 8 in the book of matthew chapter 24 he said in verse 8 all these are the beginning of sorrows after he started saying you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars there shall be earthquakes in diverse places uh nations shall rise against nation kingdom against kingdom they're gonna be famines pestilence after he got done saying all of this he said these are the beginning of sorrows verse 9 and then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. That persecution is going to become more uh, severe against the body of Christ. 
and then shall many be offended. He's talking about the body of Christ, Christians. He said, and then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And then he said that many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Hear what Jesus said. He said, after the wars and rumors of the wars, after all of these things, then he said, then the persecution is going to become more severe amongst the body of Christ. And he said, after this, the body, the Christians, the body of Christ, they're going to be offended. Many are going to be offended. See, that's that offense that has taken root in their hearts. And then he said, it's going to cause them to betray one another. And not just betray one, but hate one another. See, that spirit of offense that Satan is going to bring, it's going to divide Christians. It's going to bring a division. They're not going to be able to get along. And it's because of a wounded heart. It could be things that they're holding on to from the past. It could be things, the persecution that they faced over the amount of time that they've been saved. And their heart is wounded. And what they're failing to do is run to Jesus. Like he said in Matthew 11, 28 through 30, he said, come to me, all of you who are weary and heavy burdened. And he said, I will give you rest for your soul. I will heal you if you come to me. And this is something I myself have had to do many and many of times. And I still got to do it to make sure offense don't take root in my heart to where I become evil. Look, he said, many go be offended and then they go betray one another and then they go hate one another. Now you can't tell me you ain't seeing this in the body of Christ. I'm seeing it. And it's a tactic that Satan is using over and over again to where even now when you try to correct a Christian because they in error, they get mad at you. They hate you. They get offended and start casting your name out as evil. Even now when you try to correct a brother, uh, he get angry at you. They get angry or a sister in Christ. They get angry at you. They get offended. It's because offense has taken root in their heart. And they ain't went before Jesus to allow them to cleanse them, to allow him to heal them from whatever it is that they holding in their heart. I'm going to be the first to, to declare. I'm going to be transparent because I'm going to tell you. It's been times in my walk where I've allowed offense to take root in my heart. And it has caused me to do, do things or say things to brothers or sisters in Christ that I regret. And you know what I had to do? God, I had to run to Jesus and I had to allow him to heal me and correct me. And I had to go back and apologize to a lot of brothers and sisters in Christ. Because I allowed that spirit of offense to take root. And it don't matter how much work we do for Jesus. And people think that you can go out here and preach every day in the streets. You can preach so many sermons and do all these wonderful works for Jesus. But if that heart ain't right, if your heart is offended and you ain't bearing the fruit, you can't bear the fruits of the spirit if you got an offended heart. It's impossible to do. You can't bear the fruits that's written in Galatians 5.22 if you got an offended heart. And you can't even preach out there uh, to people. Be a minister of the gospel to people if you got an offended heart. Because as soon as they disagree with you, as soon as they say something, they start picking at that offended heart, you're going to become a realer. You're going to start the, uh, getting in contentious with them. You're going to start arguing with them. You're going to start yelling at them. You're going to get in the flesh. Why? Because you got an offended heart. And this is what Jesus said. This is a tactic that Satan is using in these last and evil days. He's trying to use persecution and things to wound our heart. And then he's trying to cause our hearts to be offended to where we start betraying one another and hating one another. And he's using it to cause a bunch of division. Boom, boom, boom. When I read the book of Acts chapter 2, how all of these, the body of Christ was in the upper room. I'm sure they had many things that they didn't agree about. I'm sure it was th differences that they had. 
but something that they allowed to happen. They didn't allow that to cause division. They set that to the side. They didn't continue on. Well, look, I think you wrong about this. Or look, I think this. They didn't keep on calling up one another, trying to debate over something that they uh, disagreed about. No, they set that to the side and they focused on what was more important above all. And that's that souls be saved. That's that people come to the salvation and knowledge of this gospel of Jesus Christ, his death, burial, and his resurrection. But you don't see that today. And because you got so many immature Christians, the immature Immature, they allow this offense to take root in their heart. <coughs> and it's immaturity, it's being carnal minded. You know, when Paul wrote to the Corinthians, he said, I can't talk to y'all about these spiritual things because y'all still carnal minded. It's so many contentions amongst y'all. Y'all of the carnal mind. Y'all trying to compete with one another. You trying to debate about who knows the most, who, uh, what denomination you want to be a part of. It's so much contentious. Y'all carnal minded, Paul said. You're calling them out. You're immature Christians. And the Bible tells us to guard our hearts. Guard your hearts with all diligence because out of it, it comes the issues of life. We got to guard our hearts to keep from allowing this offense to take root in our heart to where the person that Jesus sent in your path, the person that Jesus sent to you is someone really sent from him, but because your heart is so offended and now you so busy thinking that you know every single thing, can't nobody correct you. You write about everything because of that pride and you, you know you've been called and you know that God has been using you, but you're so full of pride and your heart is so offended because of things you're holding on to from the past now you missing out on a word from the Lord you missing out on things that God want to do and I've seen this replay over and over again there's been times I allowed that to happen and I had to repent and go to the throne and I remember in 2018 <coughs> like I told y'all I was in Arkansas and I was at the kitchen table and God spoke to me like I'm speaking to you and he said Jordan don't allow the offended to offend you don't allow the offended to offend you because I was going through a season where I was getting persecuted so heavy and brothers was betraying me and my brother just walked out on God and turned into an atheist, one that I loved, one that I cared about, one that I seen God, you, I looked up to him and my heart was going, I was going through all of these different things, man, I was just discouraged and I was going through it and God seen it and he spoke to me. And he said, don't allow the offended to offend you, Jordan. And he started showing me how I got to guard my heart. Somebody that's offended, it's hard to convince them out of love that they're wrong. It's hard to humbly tell them that you're wrong about this. Because offense is already in their heart. So every little thing, they're going to react and they're going to take it the wrong way because they have an offended heart. Look what he says in Proverbs. Let me go to that right quick. I'm going to show you with the word. Look what he said in Proverbs 18, verse 19. A brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city. And their contentions are like the bars of a castle. <laughs> he said a brother that's offended or a sister, it's hard to win them over. Because their heart is offended. They have an offended heart. Their heart is wounded. They ain't allowing Jesus to heal them. They might be doing all these works for Jesus. But it all boils down to it's hard to win them over. It's hard to correct them. It's hard to tell them that they're wrong. It's hard to, to show them that they're wrong. It's hard to tell them that you need to humble yourself. Or they're going to take everything in an offended way because of that spirit of offense that has taken them over. And then Jesus said, after he said, you shall betray one another, hate one another. He said many false prophets going to rise up. And a lot of Christians are going to turn to these false prophets because they're going to speak things that makes them feel good. Why? Because they got offended hearts. They don't want to hear the truth. The truth is going to offend them. It's going to prick it's going to prick their hearts. It's going to tip it's going to touch that offended heart in the way that hurts them. And they're not going to receive it. So they're going to run to these false prophets. Prophesy to us lies. Tell us things that we want to hear. They're going to give heed to seducing spirits and doctors of devils because they got offended hearts. Their hearts are wounded and they're going to persecute the real service of the Lord. They're going to hate us. They're going to hate who 
persecuted Jesus the most? It was Jews. It was those people who was claiming to be children of Abraham. Those was the ones that persecuted Jesus the most because they had offended hearts. They was hard to be won over. Their hearts was offended. So when Jesus came preaching the truth that was contrary to what they wanted to obey, they got offended. Those are the ones that were screaming, crucify him, give us Barabbas. Those was the ones that tried to throw him over the cliff. Look at the uh, Pharisees. Those was the ones that hung around just to bring them down. I almost made a message about that today. They hung around just to bring them down. And uh, those was the Pharisees. They hung around Jesus just to find some kind of fault in him. They was only watching him because they wanted to find some fault. They wanted to find some kind of error that they can use to prove that this is a false lying prophet. He ain't really sent from God. They wanted something to try to use to try to destroy his identity. Man, I feel glory. I feel it because I go through that all the time. And it's because they had offended hearts. It's because their hearts was wounded. And the truth, the message of the truth was convicting them. They didn't like it. It didn't sit well with their spirit. And yet they was claiming to be the children of Abraham. And Jesus kept telling them, if you was really the child of Abraham, you go do the things that Abraham did. If you really a child of God, like you say, you will love me because I came forth and was sent from God. And this is what an offended heart does. It will cause you to miss out on maturing in God. It will hinder you. It will hinder you from correction. It will hinder you from growing in God. It will hinder you from allowing God to use you in the way that he really wants to use you. It don't matter how, how old you, you are. It don't matter how long you claim to be saved. Like I told you, that brother that I was with was saved 10 years, 44 years old. 10 years. I'm barely in my 20s at this time. 10 years, 44 years old. He was saved for 10 years. And that spirit of offense took root in his heart. So I don't look at that age. And I don't look at how long you've been saved. I'm looking at them fruits. I'm discerning that. And God has been allowing me to see how Satan is using this spirit of offense to destroy a lot of Christians' anointing. To destroy them growing. It's destroying their walk. It's causing many to turn to these strange doctrines out here. It's causing a lot of them to turn away from the Lord. And it's because when they get offended or they get hurt or persecuted and they're not allowing Jesus to heal them. They're not allowing Jesus to pour into them. You can't keep pouring into people ministering and doing all of these things and you ain't even allowing Jesus to pour into you. People ask me all the time, I ain't, I ain't been seeing you go out on the streets this week. You expect me to go out every single day, it ain't happening. Because I got to go to that mountaintop. I got to allow Jesus to pour into me. I can't pour into a cup if my cup is empty. You can't pour into somebody's cup with an empty cup. You ain't allowing Jesus to pour inside of you. What do you have to pour inside of people? Just a message, but nobody getting saved? Just a message, just your voice, but nothing happening. It's because you ain't allowing the Lord to pour inside of you. And offenses are going to come. Satan go send them in our path. Whether it's through family members, whether it's through people that we love, we care about, whether it's through the world, other religions. Satan is going to send offense. Look what Jesus said in Matthew 18, verse 7. Woe unto the world because of offenses. For it must needs be that offenses come. But woe to that man by whom the offense coming. So the Lord said, woe to the world. Offenses are going to come. I've spoken it. It's a need that they are going to come. But woe to the one that brings that offense. He even said on one occasion, it's better that a millstone will hung around your neck than to cause one of these little ones to be offended. He's not just talking about children. He's talking about children of God. It's better than a millstone hung around your neck than to bring that offense. And this is a tactic that Satan is using and going to use more and more as we see the coming of Jesus draw near. So my friend, I said all of that to say this. Don't allow Satan to offend your heart. Guard your heart by all means necessary.
Me personally, when I start feeling that flesh trying to rise up where I get to where I want to argue with somebody or something like that, I run to the mountaintop. I run to Jesus and I start praying, Lord, I don't want an offended heart. Lord, I don't want to let offenses take root in my heart, Lord. I don't want to allow Satan to overtake me with evil. You said be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Lord, I ask that you heal me. Heal me from every offense, oh God. Heal me from every grudge, Lord. Heal me from everything that's in my heart that I've allowed Satan to take root in my heart, Lord God. To plant in my heart, Lord. Free me from this, Lord God. Heal me from this, Lord, so that you can use me the way that you desire to use me. This is something that I pray continuously. Because you see a lot of preachers, man. I see it. Street preachers. They out there arguing back and becoming realists because offense is in their heart. Brother betraying brother, sister betraying sister because offense is in their heart. Christians not able to be in unity and love for one another. Why? Because offense is in their hearts. Persecuting one another, fighting over the scriptures because offense is in their hearts. This is what Satan is using, my friend. And I'm going to tell you like Jesus. I was just reading it. It's in the book of John. I'm going to tell you like Jesus said. I think it's uh, 15. Let me see. Let me make sure before I quote this. <laughs> Jesus said, Every tree in me that don't bring forth good fruit, it's going to be cut down and thrown into the fire. He said in John 15, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And it's going to be thrown into the fire. He said, abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can you except you abide in me. So he's letting us know, look, I am the true vine. If you don't stay with me, what it means when he says abide in me, that means stay with me, continue with me, continue to fellowship with me, continue to get along with me so that I can purge you, so that I can clean you, so that I can tend you, so you can bear forth good fruit. So he said, whoever don't abide with him and allow him to do this, he's going to basically get rid of you and throw you in hell. Every tree that don't bring forth good fruit, he go cut it down and cast it away. The fig tree. You ever read about when Jesus cursed the fig tree? This fig tree didn't bring forth no fruit. We represent that fig tree. It didn't bring no fruit that was pleasing to the Lord. So he cursed it and it withered away. The next day the disciples came up to him and said, Lord, look at this fig tree that you have cursed, Lord. It have withered away. And Jesus said, yeah, he started building their faith up. We represent that fig tree. If you ain't bringing forth good fruit, the Lord said he going to get rid of you. And you go wither away eventually. Because you're not abiding in the vine. You're not allowing Jesus to pour inside of you. And this is a continual uh, feeling of the spirit. What is it? Ephesians 5. Be filled with the spirit. Be not filled with wine, but be filled with the spirit. This is a continual feeling that the Lord has to do in us. And not, it's not just a one-time thing. You see on many occasions in the book of Acts, it was times where they got filled. The cloven of tongues came around them and fell on all of them. They started speaking in tongues. And then you see a time where they was praying for boldness. And the fire came in the Bible saying they were all filled. This is a continual feeling that God has to do in us. He, we got to continue to allow him to pour inside of us or offense is going to take root in our heart. And then everybody that come in your path is a threat to you. You want to think everybody is out to get you. And I'm speaking this from experience, my friend. Not something that somebody taught me. Something the Lord had to show me about myself. Something the Lord had to show me about other people. Everybody going to be a threat to you. Everybody going to be out to get you. You're going to be trying to compete with everybody because offense is in your heart. Can't nobody correct you. And it's a prideful thing. That's what it is. It's a, it's a prideful thing. That's the root of pride. And we got to allow God to heal our hearts because we don't want to have an offended heart. Because eventually, like that fig tree, you're going to wither away. No matter how much works you do for Jesus, how much you talk about Jesus, that don't mean nothing. The Lord said many go stand before him and say, Lord, we did many wonderful works in your name. And he going to say, I didn't know you. What fruit did you bear? Bring forth fruit that's meat for repentance. Let's pray that God heal us and we don't allow offense to take root in our hearts.
Já bych blesk. 